Now, he has written that he is an ordinary man to whom extraordinary things have happened. I think, as his bio shows, it's far more accurate to say that he's an extraordinary man who has led an extraordinary life. One of the things I took from law school was this idea that I don't have all the right answers, that I'm like everyone else. It is a process of working through answers, and law school teaches you that. If you think you're right, there is nothing wrong with being the only one. I have been in Washington for over 30 years. I've been at the senior levels of government for almost three decades. And I think I'm more idealist today than the day I arrived in 1979. But the thing that probably impacted me the most about him um, was that he seemed to be in touch with reality. I really appreciated how Justice Thomas talked about how important it was to stand on what you believed if you believed you were right. I, I was mean, impressed with how cordial he was with us, joking. I, he had us laughing at moments, and other times I would look down the aisle and we were all in goosebumps from the things he said. Oye, oye, oye. For, uh, two students, four students from the University of Tennessee to have that opportunity to argue in front of a Supreme Court Justice. Uh, was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and, and an absolute thrill for all of us involved. I was just glad I wasn't arguing in front of them. Um, I was nervous for them. But I have to commend you all as my colleagues then, uh, and, and especially with the time frame and the quality of your work. And remember that all of us had our first arguments too. And I have no idea what I said. I think it was something like blither, blither, blither. <laughs> But you, then you'll have a second <coughs> argument, and a third, and a fourth, and you can only improve, but you're starting at a very high level.